Today on Co-op for Two, we review Last Defense. You are watching Co-op for Two. I'm Jesse. I'm here with Greg. Thanks for having me on your channel. And what are we doing today? Today we are reviewing The Last Defense. No which the. No the. Just Last Defense. We are reviewing its sister game, Last <laughs> Defense, <laughs> um, which is a timed cooperative game. And it is not, as I thought it was going to be, a tower defense game. Yeah. And there's the little thunder there. Ooh. Very, very mm -hmm. it's, it's ominous for this review. But first, we're going to see uh, an overview of how you play the game. In Last Defense, you are trying to save your city from a monster, alien, sentient plant invasion. It's a real-time game, lasts exactly 20 minutes, uh, and it's app-driven. Over the course of the game, the app will instruct you uh, to put out scientists covered by rubble tokens. It will tell you where. It will also bring out various threats. Depending on your difficulty level, you can be facing three or four mo of these uh, monsters. It will tell you where to put them, and when you do, you'll put out a scientist and a rubble token. Then you'll flip this up to show its colored side and show that it's active. On your turn, you will do, the first thing you'll do is you'll roll your dice. Then you'll decide whether you'd like to keep those dice or not. If you don't want them, you'll roll them both one more time, and then you must keep the second result. Uh, then you'll draw however many tools indicated here, and you can move as many spaces that are indicated here. They have to be connected, of course. Uh, you cannot enter a place with a monster in it unless you discard a flare token, okay? Uh, or they are in your special area. So the this uh, on-call nurse can enter the hospital, so that's fine. Um, after you finish your movement, if you end your movement and you're in a space that has rubble, you will flip the rubble face up, and then if you have the symbols that you need, you can discard them. So if I had these two, I could discard them, remove the rubble, and place the scientist on my card. If you end your movement in the plaza, you can take everything off of your card, and you would, and place it in the plaza. As soon as you have the required um, scientists that you need to defeat a particular monster, in this case the meteorologist and the astrophysicist, put them on that, remove that, put it into the app that you've defeated that monster, and then continue play. Uh, as soon as you're done with your turn, you will make sure to discard down to five tools so you can never have more than five cards, and you'll pass the dice to the next player for them to keep going. And that is Last Defense. Okay, so uh, here we are with... Um, Slender Man and a dog, the doggy. That's mm -hmm. like a new, a great buddy cop movie there. Mm -hmm. um, so, components, theme. This is our fastest turnaround from oh. opening the box to reviewing. <laughs> yeah, it. yeah, it definitely Which is. Which it's not a good sign. <laughs> a little tip, a little tip to you YouTube reviewers. <laughs> it's a thirty-minute tip, <laughs> like an hour and fifteen minutes after you've like just opened the box, yeah. you're uh, you're you're reviewing. But. Them. Sometimes I feel like an obligation, like mm -hmm. as reviewers, like you have to play this, we should play this game a lot of times, but like mm -hmm. you'd kill yourself if you had, if I told you, Greg, you got to play this 10 more times before you review it, you're you'd like, say, that's it, I quit. You got to play this. Here are the keys. Yeah. It was been nice working for you. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> it's, it's like, I can't do it. This game or Deadline, you got to play them 10, 10 times more, one or the other. Yeah. Okay, well, we're sorry. getting a little carried away here, yeah, little, which is what we normally do, but um, okay, so theme, the th Again, it's weird because Last Defense makes you think of Tower Defense, or makes me think of that anyway. Very confusing. It's not a little the case at all. Yeah. Um, so this is a real-time game, which I generally enjoy. I like that tenseness. Uh, you yes, do not you enjoy do. It. I tend not to like these. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just I just said your answer for you. You're right. right. No, that's fine. <laughs> Here's the key. You're going to be so essentially, though, it's it's, it's fairly. I mean, you have like these kind of stereotypical, uh, really fifties kind of like monsters, right? Like the the fifties movie. We both the, like this theme. Oh, I love, I love. Yeah. You know, I love the blob and you know the tentacles, like in those Harryhausen movies, and you know, like you have to kill sentient plants, the big spider robots, the aliens. It's it's, it's cool. It's like a neat like thing. But 
the the art and style and stuff doesn't really match that that like fifties feel no, to me. No, although kind of a weird this is sort disconnect. of a diversion, but I think I solved one of the mysteries. What? Like Prospero Hall, the company that mm -hmm. did this, right? All of the games are IP games. Mm -hmm. They're like horrified movie monsters and whatever. I think they made this for the movie monster IPs, and the company uh, was like, "Nope, not good enough." Yeah, we had a little bit. <laughs> no, of a this is not. This is not good enough. Yeah, we had a little bit of a discussion about this. You know, we're going to kind of do, I think, a wrap up. We've been sort of sort of playing a bunch of these. I guess they're Target exclusives. A lot of them. Um, there's like like Prospero Hall's been kind of cranking these out, uh, these games out, and so we're going to kind of do like kind of a sort of catch-all overview of all of them, and all of them have had, as you say, a, an IP attached to them, but except for this one, so it's yeah. kind of interesting. They're that, all, are they all Funko? Also, this is Funko hiring we'll Prospero Hall, that, yeah, yeah. but yeah, what? I think they are. Okay, so sorry, mm. uh, components. I keep getting yeah, you no, off that's track. okay. So, um, I mean. So it's good. That's actually a good lead-in because normally, uh, with our experience, like Fast and the Furious, Horrified, um, some of these others, you know, it's like the, you're, you're amazed. It's like it's a twenty or thirty dollar game, and it looks like a sixty five dollar, seventy dollar game, and, and it plays like a good game. Like yeah. this is the first time we've been on the other side of that coin. Right, right. So for for the the components, I mean, you're really getting a twenty dollar game this time. Mm -hmm. I mean. These are the kind, the tokens and stuff you, what you would expect in like a mass market game. This is a mass market game, like Fast and the Furious, the other games of that, you know, in this Prospero Hall line, they're they do not feel like mass market games in their in their components and everything. Yeah. Um, but you know, the minis are are fine. I guess there's a, you know like I like the th the theme. I guess is kind of cool. But like, you know, there's a few like attempts. I do like the fact that like if this monster is not in the game yet. You know, it's going to be black and white, and then when it is uh, in the game, you'll turn it over to its color side, which is a kind of nice way to look and see. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you're playing the game, you know, the biologists and the chemist are the two that need to get, the two scientists that need to defeat the sentient plants. Mm -hmm. The astrophysicist and the meteorologist has to get the space aliens. So there's a slight attempt at some of a, building a bit really, of a theme. Oh, they can see this on the front camera, yeah. Yeah. And then, um, you know, there is an attempt here to, like, you, you essentially you have a different characters or whatever here, but they don't have, it's kind of a miss. You have no real power, but no I do powers. like that, you know, that um, the barbecue dad is an orange, it's orange and you uh -huh. have orange on the thing. So that's your home place that you're allowed to go into, even if there's a, a monster there. But I mean, it's such a busy board, you know, that that's so hard to, like I kept thinking like, where is the hospital, you know? So it's for my character. Oh, you know what? I just noticed that the, the special locations are color matched too. Did you? Is that you what know, you just said? Actually, what you should do is rewind this review and watch the thing I just said. Like, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it's uh, yes, that's what I was just saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but otherwise, I mean, it's you know, whatever the dice are, it's all functional, but not. It's not gonna mm -hmm. light the world on fire. Although for twenty dollars, it's what you would expect for a twenty for a twenty dollar game, and maybe even good for a twenty dollar game. So, mm -hmm. let's uh, let's move on to the next thing. Uh, let's, it's a quick to play game, right? It's very, it's very simple. The rules are simple. It's just, it's not even a, it's just like a pamphlet, right? It's not even an actual book with staple pages. Um, so you want to talk about the decisions and the sure. actual gameplay? Well, yeah. What did you well, think? Well, on our little list here, we have our, you know, it's, it takes like two minutes to set up. It is quick the game is to set 20 up. Minutes and to play. that's the other thing you said. Like it, it feels like a twenty dollar game. It does, except for the fact that there is an app. Mm -hmm. You do need an app, and mm -hmm. it's free, and that costs them some money. You know, and, and, and you it know, did. It was mm -hmm. a tiny bit buggy just once. Like it hung up on us. When we played three games, in the second game, Jesse's like, "Is this thing working?" And we looked, and it was locked on nineteen. It had gone for a minute, and then it was just yeah. stopped. Yeah. It was just doing its music. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, not the biggest deal in the world. You can reset it, but it's, I mean, if you, you know, if you were really invested in the game and you were 10 minutes in and, mm -hmm. and you realize that it wasn't going anywhere, that it would be a little mm -hmm. upsetting. But the app is kind of cool because it's, you know, you don't use it, you don't looking at it in terms of its functionality. You're just listening to it. And it does kind of sound cool, like where she's like, oh, you know, like, like this is the news and, and we've cited a monster in the shopping mall or whatever, you know. That's it makes cool. sense, these real-time games, to have apps or soundtracks. Mm -hmm. Like it does make it more immersive. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the music in it is, I could take, really not, I could do without it. But but I think, you know, it's it's functional or whatever. So, so the decisions. Mm -hmm. Were there any decisions in this game? I didn't feel like there were any to, no. to speak of. 
No, I mean, essentially you have, you can re-roll your dice. So right. you think, okay, well, I want more tools and I don't have to move that far, so I'll re-roll them. Mm -hmm. But I mean, there are moments, I mean, uh, this the, the playthrough that we filmed, which you can watch on the channel, uh, I mean, I was just standing on the same space, rolling, waiting, because there was, the monsters were not moving off the spaces where we needed to go. And the only way to go on a space with a monster is to get rid of a, a flare. And so I was just rolling and rolling and rolling. Just my every turn, like, drawing my cards. Oh, I didn't draw a flare. Keep, There's I mean, a just, lot of time like, spent, like, turns. just waiting. Like, you can't do anything. There's no point moving someplace. You're just waiting mm -hmm. for the cards you want. So you're just like, it's very it's very unmotivating. You're like, I don't have the things to do that. What? Why bother even taking my turn? Yeah. It's going to roll. Yeah, and, and you know, to that point, I know we're kind of jumping around here with our review here. But, I mean, essentially, like, we had, like, six minutes left out of the 20 minutes. We were just like, we could have gotten a cup of coffee. It's like, so you're like, oh, I'll just waste my turn. Who cares? There's no tension. And we played it on the, I don't know, I guess it's, there's two hard modes, and we played on the hardest. Mm -hmm. hard well, mode. you've raised the point I wanted to make, which is we played on the hard, there are two difficulty levels. Mm -hmm. We played on the hard one. That's it. There's no more difficult way mm -hmm. to make this game. Like, we're, we're now stuck with a game that even if we enjoyed, we'd mm -hmm. have no way to play at a challenging level. Yeah, so I think in a, in a, in a so to, to, to kind of bring this back a little bit and, and, and talk a little more like less all over the map. Generally in a timed game, from a design perspective, like you don't want a lot of decisions, right? Like, like you don't want, or rather, uh, that's maybe that's not, you don't need like, you don't, you're not an Agricola and you're not like, like I'm drafting this and I'm going to build, you know, you're not, you, the speed of the game, the fact that it's, it's, you're, you're just focused on go, go, go. Mm -hmm. Your decision space in your, it's all tactics and, and your decision space is just down to like, you know, a couple of options, right? But the, the fun comes from that pressure that you feel. Yeah. And so I think in this game, like it, they just dialed it so far down that like, you're essentially just like, you have almost really just no decision. You're like, okay, well, I guess I'll go in this direction because there's no monster or not. Here's your dice. And, you know, I mean, having like, I mean, let's talk about this. I mean, do you think that we should have like, do you think having a power would have been a good idea? Yeah, I mean, it's, it certainly would have made it more interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and um, just talking about what you said before, like, I think it's a very good point that when you're dealing with the real-time games, you're sort of leaning a little bit more on the chaos and the pressure to make these interesting things and force you to make decisions quickly. Mm -hmm. And there are some pieces in this game that look like it could, it could lend itself to some strategy, like this ability to trade stuff mm -hmm. or the, the decisions about what cards to keep. Mm -hmm. But I think when we played, what it came down to was the smarter thing to do is just quickly trade turns and just you wait till you get the cards you need. Yeah. Like we, didn't we really never, do that, but you could, you, we yeah, never thought, through. we never tried to figure out how to trade cards really because it just wasn't worth the time that it would take us to figure out what we should trade. Occasionally mm -hmm. we flirted with the idea of it, mm -hmm. but most of the time, and, and you can move around so quickly that the movement decisions were so minimal. Mm -hmm. yeah, Everything it was, like, it was, was just like, quicker yeah. to just wait till you get the cards. Yeah. Wait till you get the cards, wait till you roll the dice. Yeah, I mean, moving like... You know, moving around the map, you're like, well, I can get, can I get to that? No, I'll just move so I can get kind of closer. Oh, you revealed that. Okay. Like, like it didn't really, and if there was a monster in the way, it was like, well, I'll just stay I'll here. Just wait, I'll just wait, wait till the monster I'll moves. I'll just wait 10 more turns of my turns because I don't have a flare and there's no option really. So I'll just keep going. And this idea of like, I can go here and you can go here, like never coming up, never going to ever make any kind of a difference like yeah i mean any, i was able to do it last game but it's not time, it's right? not in your strategy you're just like oh that happened to be lucky i'll do that yeah. and the monsters are all exactly the same mm -hmm. they'd have no there's no specialness yeah. there's it takes you different combinations to kill each one but we never spent any we never spent a moment worrying yeah. about how to kill this monster it was just whatever go for whatever token near you don't know we didn't care where we went yeah. we just whatever was the most opportune move yeah. that next move yeah. do it and gather it so i mean like it's interesting because i think that they could have done something like if they wanted to make this look we're going to make this for non-gamers or non-gamery crowd or younger crowd or whatever you would think that they would say okay here's the basic game and then if you want to play a more advanced game flip over your thing and now you have a special power and you know maybe 
in the special game, aliens have a special power, spider robots have a special power, sentient plants have a special yeah. power, like, to make it more interesting, right? It really is a little unusual that you see a game nowadays that is just, like, pure non-gamer tiny kids. Like, there's no advanced mode. It's very interesting yeah. that it's not, that's mm -hmm. not there. I just thought of this, too, like, uh... <laughs> Jesse just like collected all these airlifts and every any game you ever play you're like I can move anywhere like on the map Oh my god, that's so valuable. This you're like no, okay. It's like it's like uh, I just watched uh, that Loki show and they're like uh -huh. This is a little bit of a, a, a slight spoiler, but like Like they're in this alternate like this kind of nexus of time and they're like, oh, yeah, we got these ex Infinity stones piled everywhere. They're like paperweights. They don't care. <laughs> like, and you're like, and so it's like kind of like that where you're just like, oh yeah, here we have like all these tokens that we have no no need for. Um, that in another game would be essentially powerful. So, I mean, I did want to say this. Like, this is a cooperative game that there's no cooperation. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. There was no cooperation for mm -hmm. us. There was no need to. No, and that's that's a that's a that's a death knell for a cooperative game that you don't have to cooperate. Here's what's crazy. I could have left the table. I could have been like, I gotta take this phone call and I could have gone for, away for 10 minutes. And you could have just kept playing and ignored me, just been pretended I just like was rolling or whatever and just left me here and if a monster land, it would have made no difference no to difference, how you played. Yeah. And it would have made no difference how I played either. So, well, of course, if I was over there. But yeah, so yeah, let's just look through our like, thing real fast. I, well, uh, here's, here, here, this game inspired me to a new idea. Hmm. What's that? This game needed a maximum age. Yeah, like, that's a pretty good, yeah. We've played games by this company that were targeted at a younger group, mm -hmm. but, but we real gamer could, be, uh, could find some enjoyment from. This is not that game. Like, there is no way you're going to find a yeah, group like of fast, gamers that's going to enjoy this. I didn't mean to I cut you off a little bit. Yeah, no. Uh, fast and the Furious was like a gamer's game hiding as a mass market game. This game is really just completely for kids, I think. You know, I don't. I hate, I, I hate to say that to be like sort of on the high horse, but like, it's not really enough decision making there. And you know, it's like, who's? I mean, at this company, like, I feel like, is there a way for them to be like, hey, and I? Yeah, hey, for real, this is a kid's yeah, game. Yeah, this for is real, a don't uh, this buy is this. a gamer's game. This is a, you know, I don't know. It's a very confusing, and I don't know how you would get around. I mean, the eight plus is that an indication? But I feel like lots of game boxes say eight or ten plus. You know? Yeah. So, but yeah, so replayability i mean you're playing the same game over and over again it does not nothing changes no I mean, different the scenarios. app is going to say to bring it out in Boy, a that, and that's with, a missed opportunity for using an app yeah with an app yeah. yeah you always talk about how you can use an app and infinite stuff so um can we talk for a minute yeah. like do you think kids will enjoy this game because i have a heart i mean obviously it's it feels a little ridiculous <laughs> that we are reviewing this but yeah can you imagine if you had kids because i have a hard time seeing like if there was, if this was the only, mm -hmm. have you ever seen that 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 guy's YouTube's videos where he's like, a pitch meeting for this, or he's like the first yeah, couple yeah. that figures out you oh, can no, get divorced. Uh, Maybe we should break up. Oh my god, can you imagine? That'd be so good. It's too bad we can't though. Why? Well, I mean, we kind of promised, right? Remember? There was like a bunch of people there. There was that dude in a robe. Oh, the guy in the robe. Yeah. Oh, he made us promise to some pretty intense stuff, didn't he? Yeah, kept talking about his dog. No, he was saying God. Oh, yeah, no, that does make sense. You know what? We also signed papers, remember? And we got those people to watch us sign them, and then we sent them to the government. We got the government involved, didn't we? Why did we do that? It's the same guy. Okay, the I saw same I've seen guys a pitch meeting for, pitch for meeting. Yeah. He's very okay. smart, very funny. Yeah. He also d does like a whole series of videos, like the first okay, couple that figures that. out you could get divorced, or the first couple that figures out you could get <laughs> married, or whatever, yeah, okay. or the first That's person true. who ever figured out yeah, what yeah. kissing is. Okay, so like, if this was the only real-time game ever made, that might be an interesting mm -hmm. novelty. But boy, I have a hard time figuring out any scenario where I would recommend this to any group of little kids. Like there um, are a million better little games. Okay, so I, in, in a vacuum of like, or not in a vacuum, like in, you have all these games, we know about all these games and stuff, and I think like, yeah, there's definitely better games out there, but I could see like, non-gamer kids, you know, like not the, not kids whose parents are playing Ticket to Ride with them or whatever, but non-gamer kids, four or five of them sitting around having a little fun with this as sort of an intro to a cooperative game, a gateway style. I think that would, that makes sense. I mean like, 
you know, like certain, like um, Forbidden Island has some mechanics in there that might be a little more, you know, I think of that as like kind of a good, like I played that with my uh, cousin's kids and, you know, like that went really well. Although they, they could be more of a game, you know, the, mm-hmm. more of a gamer family. But like, I just, I was thinking about them as like a benchmark and then I was just thinking like, oh, I, I, I could see this being for... I have a like, really hard time thinking who I... Uh, any kid no. that could handle the rules no. of a board game, Forbidden Island, Horrified, no. uh, another game by Prosper Hall, like just the tiniest no. tick up in complexity would offer them yeah. something fun to do. This is more like an activity. Well, okay, so we're much kinder on this game than I thought we were going to be. I thought we were going to really run it through. <laughs> oh, really? But I feel like I... Okay. We, 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 you think we can wrap it up? Maybe, yeah, I don't, I don't feel like we were kind to it. There is no one to recommend this game to. I didn't say to. we were kind to it. I said but we I mean, were kinder like, to it. This is a game that I can't think of a single group person mm. that I would recommend this to. Well, I do want to talk about... Uh, so, again, I guess to improve it, special powers, special powers, maybe something going on in the app that you can change things up a little bit with. Um, some kind of bigger decision space, right? Uh, to, to start, but so let's talk about what games oh, are alternatives, a lot similar a but maybe better. That's a good idea. Right. The first one that comes to me is horrified. It feels a little bit like monsters moving around, mm-hmm. causing damage. It's not real time, obviously, but there's a game where you've got special mm-hmm. powers and you've got real pace and tension going mm-hmm. on. What else? What would you? You've got some real well, time games that yeah, you like so, a little better. One of my favorite cooperative games is Escape, Escape the Curse of the Temple, mm-hmm. which I think is great. It's got a lot of variety, a lot of variability. Um, there's lots of little modules that you can buy to improve and you know enhance your experience and stuff. And you really do on that feel tense and skill like, ah, ah, I gotta go, I gotta yeah, go. Yeah, and, like, and can I also point out another difference between them, mm-hmm. which is very common in real time and is not in this one, which shocked me, is the simultaneous play. Yeah. If you try this in this game, you take your turn and you're waiting. For the, the other player mm-hmm. goes after you, and this goes up to six people. And we were talking. Can you imagine a group of <laughs> oh six kids God. and you have to wait till the five other kids go? Yeah, before and then it's you your get turn? yours, and you're like, you you got knocked to the rest area, I and you're like, thinking, like, okay, I can't really do anything. There's a monster somewhere. I'm just gonna go here. Like, awful. It also gets rid of the one enjoyable thing about a real-time game, which is sort of everyone panicking and in chaos. Yeah, Here you're just waiting for the person. Point. Okay, so Escape, yeah. And do you think kids six, seven, eight years old could play Escape? I think you could, yeah. I, I, um, I don't know. I mean, I don't have kids, so I don't know. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, but it's not that complicated. You, There are modules that make it more and more complicated, but you don't have to play with those. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I think, I think, yeah, I think they could probably mm-hmm. handle it. But again, it depends on the kid. The other game that I was going to recommend as having a very similar feel, actually, is XCOM, the board game. Because that's app-driven. It mm-hmm. gives you these warnings, right? Mm-hmm. Where it's like, aliens are coming out here. That's a like, gamer's game. That is that not is, kids. Uh, yeah. You need four people. Uh-huh. I, I owned it for a while. I mm-hmm. ended up selling it because Hard you need to exactly, find exactly four people. Mm-hmm. You know? I mean, they say you can play it, but you, it, you play with four people. Mm-hmm. So, but, I mean... It, the app is telling you the events around the globe. It's very similar in in a lot of ways, right? Like, but of course, way more complicated. Like, 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 not even the same ballpark. You know, not the same sport. Nothing. Like, completely different. So, uh, but those are the two things that I was. Kind what of about Magic of. Maze? Not similar game, but a real time game. It's real time. You're not allowed to talk. Uh, the only similarity it has is is that, and it's a completely it's evolving time. puzzle. Every mm-hmm. thing is. So the only thing it shares in common is. The fact that it's a real time. Uh-huh. Otherwise. Now, we should mention, we both thought this was going to be tower defense. Yeah. There are tower defense games that they're not real time, although that's a nice idea. A real time. Um, mm-hmm. But Castle Panic mm-hmm. and then the Star Trek Panic that it's based on, those are games that kids could enjoy. Castle Panic came first and then Castle, and then Star Trek. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's Ooh. called, I think it is Star Trek. I want one that yeah, says I was right, because I feel like, you know. What, what did I say? You said Star Trek came first. No, I did not. Oh I didn't boy, say that. I really put myself in it. Yeah. Well, that'll be that'll, that'll, that'll be, that'll be a, <laughs> if, if I was wrong. Otherwise, it'll be a quiet little. Do a little button. rewind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, but both are games that kids could play. And Castle Panic just released a big deluxe Kickstarter did, version. Yeah, it's completely unnecessary. But that's Can a whole play. other thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I think we can wrap this up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Final rating, Jesse. Lowest rating I've ever given a game on our, on this channel. What is three. It? That's what I was going to say. 
Three. No real decisions. Completely anticlimactic. No, not replayable. Just, it's like nothing. Yeah, I think you summed it up perfectly for me. And then you add in the bad part about it being real time and all the hassle. Well, for you as a bad. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks for uh, joining us. <laughs> that was close. <laughs> thanks for joining us. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully, like, uh, you know, if you wanted to really like this game or you, and, and you're like, oh, man, hopefully some of the, like, XCOM or Escape from the Crystal Temple will fit that bill for you. Yeah, or if you've got young kids and they enjoy it, let us know because yeah. we could be wrong on that, yeah. right? You could, you got we some, could be wrong. Yeah, young kids, some kids for 20 bucks, why not? You no, know, I like, mean, I say don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would advise you not to go out and buy it for yeah. your kids. But if you already have it and your kids like it, <laughs> I'd be curious to know. That's a niche market you just described. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, again, thanks for joining us. was like I was like uh what yeah this like humidity and stuff is terrible on me mm -hmm. all right so I'm just gonna pass it to you tell me when you're ready <laughs> you're looking at me I dropped a I dropped a little piece of hair, piece of hair on there. You I just dropped it and let it go. I just huh? was like that, and I watched it. That's like, what you long hairs do. And I was like waiting for you to like see what I was doing, but you didn't see. That's what you long hairs do. You <laughs> leave hair everywhere. Yes. Yes, we do. Okay, good. That does look better. You have to. I. I feel like this is an argument like where like I was wanting the box and then you were wanting it and no, then neither of us wanted it. That definitely never then, happened, like, Greg. You want the box? No, I don't want See? it. See, doesn't it seem no, more I likely did. that neither of us want it? Man, I feel like we were fighting over it. I just feel like I'll, I'll take the bullet for this one, nice small box. Okay. So that's like a bit of metagaming. It is. Because now you it's have... Absolutely. You're, now I'll have it when it's like a big coffin. <laughs>